You know, uh, what, a, what a great turnaround uh, job uh, Coach is doing over there with her staff. Uh, what a great atmosphere. You know, I don't know that um, I've been in the league nine years, and um, I'm not sure I've seen an atmosphere quite like that. So uh, congratulations to Shauna and her staff and her team on what they're building here, um, especially um, you know, with, their, with the fans. I think it's great. It's great for women's basketball. Um, but uh, we knew that it was going to be a, a complete dogfight tonight um, with, a, with a really good team in Illinois. And, um, you know, we, um, I guess the advantage uh, that you sometimes have is when you, you've already played a team. And uh, as you guys are, know, um, you know, they, we opened up with them in, in conference play at our place. Learned a lot about them. Uh, certainly they've, they've improved just like we have improved. Uh, but I felt like, um, you know, our, our staff uh, did a great job of preparing and planning um, and having the right scouting report, um, especially defensively, uh, to do a much better job, um, you know, especially on, uh, on, on Cook. You know, she, she had her way with us in Bloomington, and I thought tonight, collectively, we did a much better job, uh, you know, defensively. But, um, you know, certainly I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about these two and just how terrific um, you know, they both were it's so good to have Grace Berger back. Um, she didn't, wasn't able to play against Illinois. And, um, you know, she clearly uh, was in control out there, uh, outside. And, and then we have this one over here that, um, you know, clearly was in control, I thought, on the block. So um, great win for us, great win for our program. And, um, um, yeah, so we're, we're happy to be getting out of here with a, with a good, solid win. Questions for our student athletes uh, over Tom and then Wilson. Grace, they got off to a really good start. I think like they got a lot of easy looks in that first quarter, but second, third, you guys really locked down defensively. Was there any sort of changes that were made, or was just uh, just better defensively? Um, I mean, I think I don't think there were any changes made um, by us. I think it was more just us, um, you know, taking pride in, in guarding our man and. and you know, following the defensive game plan that our coaches laid out for us, and we were definitely, I think, frustrated at the beginning that we were giving up some easy looks. So, um, you know, just as a, a, a veteran team, um, we, we huddled together and realized that if we wanted to win this game, we had to figure out a way to start making things a little harder on them. Wilson, go ahead, grab the mic. We got mic. Uh, Grace, on a similar note to that, um, when they, uh, Illinois goes on a 7 0 run, uh, you take a timeout. Being um, a senior grad student, um, one of the leaders of the team, what do you see as your responsibility at that point? What are you trying to do to kind of stop the uh, bleeding there? Um, I mean, I think um, the thing about our team is we have a lot of, a lot of um, players with a lot of experience. So it's not you know, necessarily just my responsibility or Mike's responsibility, but. You know, we all realized at the, at the beginning of the game that they were getting, you know, things too easy and that we weren't following our game plan um, like we, we typically do. So I think, um, you know, just along with my teammates, just encouraging each other and just, you know, voicing that, that we need to uh, settle down and get some stops. All right. This is for either Mac or Grace, depending on the perspective. Matt, it seems like there's only a few centers in the country that can defend you one-on-one. -on -one. You were at your, otherwise you're able to score easily in the post, like you did tonight when they didn't have an answer for you other than the double. So how much does that open up your offense when you know that they either have to double you or they can kick it out versus if you play like an elite big when, you know, maybe when you play Sonano later or something, when, they, when it's more of a one-on-one, -on -one, how different does that make the offense inside? Yeah, I mean, there's not very many people on our team that you can leave open on the perimeter. So when it comes to the double team coming, um, you know, we've done a really good job of working on it in practice, um, getting reps for me, seeing that double team, making the, the right read out of it. And I know that my teammates and my coaches have um, trust that I'll make the right decision uh, when I get the ball inside and the double comes. So I think just the reps we get in practice help um, help translate to games and, and finding a shooter on the perimeter. Question front row, right side. McKenzie, 14 points in the third quarter. Most of those is when Bostic goes out with that third foul. Is there a message you can give your team when you're like, hey, this is my time to eat, I need the, I need the ball kind of thing? I mean, not really. Um, I think that, you know, my teammates always do a great job looking for me, um, whether, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting hot or whether um, I've missed a few shots. They're always, they're always looking for me. Um, so I think it's just, you know, we do what we do and, um, yeah. Go ahead and give them 
Yeah, so you've uh, got scored a lot tonight with your left hand too, being able to spin that way compared to where you were when you got here and being able to go both ways with your footwork and your left hand. How, how much better are you now than when you when you got here? Uh, I would say I'm probably better with my right hand than when I first got here. Uh, I've always kind of naturally gone to my left hand. Um, it's always been uh, something that I, I've been good at. Sometimes I go to the left a little too much. So I think I just say that, you know, I've gotten better at um, using both rather than just my left. <laughs> uh, Mackenzie, with those 14 points in the third in the third quarter, was there anything you can pinpoint to what you were able to do there that wasn't there earlier, how you were able to get those? No, I didn't even know I had that in the third quarter. I think that, um, you know, we were just reading what the defense was giving, um, especially, you know, on, on ball screen coverages or, you know, our guards are getting down the lane and their big is sliding over and they're hitting me for drop off. So uh, that, that was just working for us tonight. Uh, I guess for both guys, where did you guys pull up with those shirts and how did those kind of get made? What was that process like? Uh, well, I don't know if you know this, but Coach Martin is now the most winning coach in Indiana women's basketball history. So we have these shirts. And What's that mean to have helped Coach Moore and reach that benchmark? I mean, I, I was talking about how when I was recruited here, I could see the vision that Coach Moore had for this program, and um, she's one of the most competitive people I've ever met, and she she hates to lose way more than she loves to win, and I think that's evident with her passion um, on and off the court for the game for us, so it's a really special thing that um, I'm able to play for her while she gets this milestone. All right, we'll dismiss our student athletes and take questions for Coach Moore. Coach, you met. Well, sorry, you need to put the microphone there. Coach, you you mentioned their program and how much it's improved. They they do you feel they're turning the program around kind of similar to what you did? I mean, both these teams were historically at the bottom, and you're a few years ahead of them. But are you at all feeling like you know that she's done a lot of the same vision you have here at Illinois? Well, I, I didn't have the the first season that they're having right now. I can I can guarantee that, but. Um, you know, again, this is a great league, and and um, you know, um, she's Shauna's done a great job. She and her staff, because it takes all of them. Uh, I think the most important thing that anytime you're building, it takes belief, you know, from your players, and I think she's getting them to believe. Um, and they they are they're a talented group that's going to continue to win a lot of ball games um, down the stretch here. There's no question. I'm I'm sure that nobody wants to see them in the, in the Big Ten tournament uh, for sure. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's great for our league. And um, you know, she's, like I said, I can't, I can't overstate it enough. How hard it is to build, but uh, you know, she's, they seem to be doing all the right things right now. Terry, I know the other day when you tied the record, you said you didn't like thinking about this kind of stuff too much in the middle of the season, but does breaking the record, does it make you reflect at all or anything about? Oh, that's a great question. I think you do reflect. Uh, you know, on how you got here, right? Fred Glass was, uh, you know, the person that um, gave me the chance and hired me. And then you think about, um, you know, the, the other assistants, right? Your staffs that have gone through here uh, with me. Rhett Weir's been being the, the longest one. Uh, he's been here for all of them, uh, as well as Liz Honiger and Bree uh, Shoemaker. Um, and so you, you think about things like that, but, um, you know, um, you know, it's a terrific milestone. I'm grateful that um, we were able to do it tonight, you know, with this group. And it's one of those, um, I, as I told our players, one of those uh, snapshot moments, those pictures, right, that you you take in your mind and you, you'll remember it, you know, for the rest of your life. So, um, yeah, it's, it's um, I'm, you know, I think I'm, 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 I'm glad it's over, right? We can move forward because uh, I know that um, other, you know, we weren't thinking about it. I know the media was thinking about it. I would assume you were going to feed your All-American regardless, but it seemed like in that third quarter, the four other players on the floor seemed to think 54 is going to touch it. Yeah, um, yeah. Can you talk about how you guys kind of played in that third quarter? Sure, we, we knew we had to had to get the ball. Yeah. And, um, but I think Grace hit it on the head. You know, you forget that this is a very veteran, mature team. 
and uh, you know they 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 understand. They know where the ball needs to be. What I I thought we, was we were we did um, was run, right? There was a stretch there where even on made baskets, you know, we got a couple easy ones at the rim, uh, just because we uh, really had a commitment to running. Um, but um, you know, certainly Mac is is um, uber talented, as we all know. Um, I thought Bostic did a great job. I mean, it was a great battle, you know, on the block. It's uh, unfortunate that, uh, you know, she got in foul trouble, but so did Mac. Um, but, um, you know, two, um, you know, two great posts uh, really, you know, having ha 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 to battle tonight. But, um, you know, I think Mac obviously can show, uh, you know, she is, she is, you know, has great footwork, great hands, can score with either hand. She's just a little bit different. She's a throwback post player that can score in a lot of different ways. But, um, you know, there's no question that uh, this group kind of had a great understanding, or they, they did have a great understanding of where the ball needed to go. Tom? Terry, uh, Tennessee, Carolina game, yeah. late in Maryland here against a very good team. How encouraged are you that your team seems to be raising its level against the toughest opponents you see? Well, it's great to see, uh, but I think there's there's one uh, one key, and that's Grace Berger being back. Um, she, she makes everybody around her better, and I continue to say it. I mean, I think there's this uh, comfort level knowing that, uh, you know, Grace is, is going to, uh, you know, be back on the floor with us. And, um, you know, she's our leader. And um, even though in that stretch we won some games, uh, it was still uh, not as easy as we wanted it to be to win. You know, we had to grind a lot of those out. Um, but um, I'm always encouraged. I, I think this is a, a group that, you um, you know, you don't you don't have to have a lot of deep conversation with them because they're all competitors and they're all veterans and they're all experienced and they know once they step between the lines that what what it's going to require to win the game. You know, they're great students of the game. Uh, they have high IQ. Uh, they love uh, strategy. They love game planning with us. Um, and um, you know, so it's it's been great. This has been a great, and I know we have you know, a lot of season left, but uh, up until this point, they've, we've had some really good moments with this group, and I'm really proud of them. We've got a question here on Zoom. Seth, can you go ahead? Hey, Terry. Uh, I've, I've heard you say that Mackenzie's confidence is at an all-time high right now. I guess maybe outside of games, what are some things you're seeing from her that are maybe separating her right now from what you've seen from her earlier in her, earlier in her career? Again, Seth, it's just she's healthy. You know, I keep saying that it seems such like a easy answer, but um, you know, she continues to do her work every day and come in extra and do more that's required. And um, you know, her teammates believe in her. And I think, I do feel like she has a maturity about her, but she also feels this responsibility that she has to show up for us. And, um, and so if there's probably any, any um, area that she's grown the most, it's, it's been mentally with understanding that she has a responsibility to this team to be able to show up every night and um, you know play really really good basketball in order for us to win question to you, Mark. you mentioned earlier uh, how good this league is you're seeing a big chunk of it right now in the stretch what in the next nine days can you learn about this team that you don't already know well, you know, I think you always just continue to learn that because, you know, every game's different. So inside of every game, you know, well, Illinois gets off to a great start, right? How did we respond to that? Well, we responded in the right kind of way. You know, we didn't, um, as I always say, we didn't blink. We didn't panic. We didn't take bad shots in that stretch. We just sort of kept chipping away at, uh, you know, uh, catching up but also regaining the lead. And, you um, and I think this group will, will continue to um, share the ball, you know, with, with one another the, the, the way they have. I think they, they realize we have, and Grace says it all the time, you know, we, we have so many um, guys on this team right now that can score for us, right? And uh, there's great balance. And so, um, you know, it could be McKenzie's night, you know, tonight, uh, Grace's night, but, uh, you know, it also could be Sid Parrish's night, you know, the way she had she came in and played against North Carolina. So, um and this is a group that collectively wants to to um, uh, try to figure out, like I said, try to figure out how to win games together. Um, but they also have a really good pulse on inside of the game and, and what needs to happen, um, you know, in a lot of the situations. And the thing I love about them is they don't panic. I mean, they come into that timeout and they're, you know, a lot of communication, a lot of talk, a lot of dialogue going on. But uh, 
you know, nothing, uh, you know, they don't, they don't get uh, aggravated. They don't get frustrated. They just, they're, they're problem solvers, right? They're looking for solutions. They're not looking to, you know, blame anybody inside of that, um, inside of that uh, huddle. And that's, that's a, that's a strong, smart veteran experience team. Terry, you mentioned the atmosphere here mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah. Uh, as Shaman tries to orchestrate a rebuild, and you kind of seen that happen. Yeah. How important is that? Buying, like, it may seem like yeah. kind of a cliche thing, but how real is that? I'm trying. To oh, it's so real, right? And um, you know, I always say this to our Hoosier Nation, which has grown also in our nine years that we've been there. Um, you know what it what it, what it, what a boost in the arm it does for your kids. The energy in the building, and it was loud tonight. Um, but also the other the other ways that it helps in recruiting, people want to play in front of fans, and so um, that's going to help as well. And um, so, like I said, I give my hat off to uh, Shauna and, and the, the fans of Illinois tonight because um, you know they showed up and watched two top 25 teams square off, and uh, you know sometimes uh, it, it, this will become a place like Assembly Hall where people don't want to show up and play there because our fans are so great, right? And um, it's only a matter of time, I think, for, for this group, for this program. Coach, question in the back, and then Will Foley, your last question, okay? Sure. Just as kind of a follow-up to that one, um, you, you mentioned you had, you've had you been in this league nine years and you hadn't seen an environment like that. Are you referring specifically to, to Illinois? Illinois. Yeah, and I guess just how different is this yeah. you know, from? Like you said, I've never seen yeah. it. I mean, it, it hasn't been that way since I've been in the league where it's there's the energy, the the, the, I guess the, the rafters, not the rafters, but you know, your lower bowl uh, has been filled with, with people, fans. So, um, and it makes it hard, right? You're over there trying to play call and you're trying to talk to your kids and you have fans, you know, cheering and, and then it's, that's a hard environment to play in if you're not used to it. Will Foley, last question. You talked about balance a little bit. Uh, four of your starting five had double digits in pairs was at eight, and it was efficiently efficient as well at 56%. Um, in terms of what you can attribute it to, is it chemistry? Is it just the offensive system? Is it talent? Like, what is it that you can point at which allows that to happen? I, I think it's just all of it. I mean, we have really good basketball players that have high IQs, and um, we understand that ball security taking care of the ball is uh, what we want to do so making good good decisions out there is is extremely important to our ball movement and um, and so I, I, I just give, give the kids credit right they just they're, they're really smart basketball players and uh, we're fortunate that um, you know we have uh, those guys out there that can can kind of fix things on their own from time to time because that's what it has to do, you know, that your offense isn't always pretty. And so you have to have guys out there that can fix things. And I think we have several of those guys out there. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Terry.